Hi, Year 11, soon to be Year 12. Uh, my name's Liz Perham. Some of you might know me, some of you might not. Some of you might have already seen me on the English sessions, um, or you might be about to see me, depending on what order you're doing it in. Uh, but I'm here in this session to talk to you about media studies, uh, to talk you through some of the details of the course, um, introduce you to the department, and um, go over the summer tasks um, as well as have a little bit of a taster um, activity as well if you want to have a go at that. Um, so I'm going to be presenting my screen in a moment uh, but you should still see me popping up somewhere in the corner um, so just bear with me a moment while I do that. OK, now this slide, I, I like to sort of start with it because uh, this sort of word or just emphasises really the um, the amount of variety, the amount of content uh, you've got in a media studies course, all really interesting and engaging stuff. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, jam packed, um, certainly not an easy option. Some people might think it is, um, but there is an awful lot to explore and an awful, awful uh, lot of skills that you develop along the way, um, a lot of which I think are really important uh, in the modern age. Um, I think you've made a great choice, obviously. Uh, it's, I think, one of the most important subjects you can study. Uh, the media is a part of every single person's day to day life um, and to understand how it operates, um, how we as audiences interact with media products. I think is extremely important. Um, you get to develop a whole range of skills, uh, skills in textual analysis, um, but maybe analysing texts that you haven't haven't before, uh, because of course it's a lot more than just the written word. Uh, you also get a chance to introduce your own creativity to tasks and produce your own media products, which is really exciting um, and a big part of the course that a lot of people really engage with and enjoy. Um, some of you might have done media at GCSE. If so, you've had a little bit of a taste of what it's like. Uh, but a lot of you, um, are, it's a brand new subject uh, and that's absolutely fine um, as well, uh, because as I said, media is such a big part of our day to day lives. You probably know a lot more uh, than you realise already. Um, so we're all starting at different points and that's absolutely fine. Um, so who's in the department then? Uh, well, you've obviously got me. Uh, you've already seen me on the left hand side. Uh, I'm also head of Key Stage 5 English. Uh, so again, if you are doing English, uh, you'll be getting to know me there as well. Uh, Miss Miller, a lot of you might know her as a year 11 form tutor this year, uh, but also an English teacher as well. And also uh, Mrs Gilman, who's new to the department, new to the school, um, and she'll be taking on some media A level as well. OK, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the course, keep it short and sweet, but just kind of give you a bit of an overview of uh, how it works. Um, so there are two exams that you do for media study at the end of the two year course. Uh, paper one um, is focused on uh, different areas of the media framework, which I'm going to talk a bit more about in a minute. Um, and that focuses on uh, key text for advertising and music video. And again, I'll give you the specifics on what they are uh, in, a, in a little while, um, as well as radio, newspapers and film. Uh, paper two uh, uh, covers what we call the in-depth uh, media products that we study um, because we study them from every angle um, and every element of the media framework. Um, and that is TV, TV drama, to be specific, magazines, online social and participatory media so that is things like websites and forums and things like that and finally video games so across the two exams you study almost every form of media uh, that there is um, it from different perspectives and different points of view so again a really uh, like content heavy course there's an awful lot that we cover across the two years but I think um, it's all really interesting and engaging stuff. Uh, so doesn't feel too much like a chore. Um, the other part of the course, uh, and you might have heard about this in the other sessions as well, is what's called the NEA or the non-exam assessment, uh, which is essentially the practical element for media studies. Um, it's 30% of the whole A-level, so quite a big chunk, nearly a third of the whole A-level. And this is where you get to produce your own cross-media production. Um, 
a lot of students really love this part of the course because it gives them a chance to be creative um, and uh, get to use the equipment and, and produce something practical. And every year they give you different options, but there are always a nice range of options. I think this year there's uh, there's been TV drama trailers, uh, magazine front covers, uh, websites, um, all sorts. So you do get kind of to pick um, the ones that you like the look of and the ones that you prefer. Uh, so it really is an, a chance for you to be creative and independent in what you decide you're going to produce. Uh, you obviously do a lot of research beforehand uh, and planning to make sure that you what you've decided to do is going to work and be uh, be convincing. Uh, but it is a really great part of the course uh, that a lot of students really love to do. Um, OK, so I'm just going to walk you through the set text. So let's, if I compare it to English, which I also teach, obviously your set text in English uh, consists of books, plays, poetry, uh, novels and so on. Obviously, in media, texts are not just written product. They can be, of course, but they're not just written products. They can also be anything uh, from a website, a film, a TV show, a video game. They, in media studies, they are all the texts, okay? So it doesn't necessarily mean it's words, all right? Um, I'm gonna show you a lot uh, on the following slides. Uh, we call them the close study products because we study them closely, okay? Uh, we study them in lots and lots of detail um, and they are what the questions in the exam are based around. Uh, so knowing them in a lot of detail is really important. Um, and uh, the exam board chooses those texts. We don't get a decision on what they are, um, but we kind of connect the core text to other examples as well. Um, but we do need to know about them in detail um, and there is a huge amount to learn. It's a two year course though, so that's to be expected. Um, so again, just quickly zip you through uh, the uh, text that we're going to be studying. No need to sort of run off and watch the whole of No Offence or The Killing right this minute. Uh, however, uh, you, I'm telling you about these now. If you so wish that you'd like to do that and get a little bit of a, a jump on it, a bit ahead of the game, uh, feel free. It can only be useful, can't it? So TV drama, um, a, a police procedural drama called No Offence, which is set in the north of England, um, and a, a, a drama called The Killing, which is based on um, a foreign language uh, sort of um, drama of the, of the same name, but this is a, a particular version of it. Uh, we study a film called Blinded by the Light. This is one of the new ones for your year group. Uh, so I'll be excited to start looking into the details of that, uh, particularly focused on the film industry. Um, we study radio. So the War of the Worlds, which is a sort of classic uh, radio broadcast from 1938. So it's the oldest uh, product that we look at, um, where uh, Orson Welles uh, presented a dramatisation of aliens attacking New York City. Um, and um, myth has it that lots of people uh, were so convinced by it that they were running in the streets and, uh, and really believed that the, the city was being attacked. How true that is, is something we explore when we study it, uh, but it's a really interesting uh, case study to look at. Um, and a BBC radio uh, news, uh, news broadcast called Newsbeat, which is aimed at sort of your age group, really. Um, we look at advertising, these two adverts in particular. Uh, so that Boss Life advert for Maybelline, um, and which is Moving Image, and a print advert for Score Hair Cream, which you've probably seen already, um, is, is an older advert from uh, the 1960s, I think it is. Um, we look at music video. Uh, so a Letter to the Free by Common uh, and Ghost Town by The Specials. Uh, most of the products, the CSPs, the close study products, come in pairs. And the reason they come in pairs is because they create quite a nice way to compare and contrast. They're not they're quite different. Uh, so they give us opportunities to look at those differences. Uh, we look at two newspapers, the Daily Mail and the I newspaper. Again, a great example of two very different publications. We also look at their websites as well. Um, and look at how news is going more and more online at the moment. Uh, we look at magazines, uh, so particularly we look at Men's Health magazine and a niche uh, sort of independent magazine called O Cumley. Um, we look at three video games, uh, Lara Croft Tomb Raider Anniversary, Metroid Prime, two and sims free play again no need for you really to go off and buy these games and buy a brand new xbox to play them on unfortunately uh, but those we are going to come to those we study those in year 13 so if you if you are familiar with the games it certainly can't hurt sims free play as you can probably guess from the name is free uh, and you can download it as an app on your phone so that could be something to to have a play with and, and have a go on um, just to familiarize yourselves with the product as a consumer 
yeah. Um, and online social participatory, that's the websites. Essentially, we look at a, a website called The Voice, which is not about the uh, TV show. Um, it, is a, it is a website and a, a newspaper um, aimed at the black community, uh, largely in London, uh, but, um, uh, but does because it's a website, of course, uh, they can branch out to wider areas than just London. Um, and Teen Vogue uh, as a more mainstream uh, website, of course, aimed at young girls. Um, so those are the products that we study in lots and lots of detail. This is what I was referring to earlier. This is known as the media framework. So there are four main areas of this framework. Media language, representation, audiences and industries. Um, and they're all, as you can see from this lovely diagram, all connected to one another. Uh, you don't really look at one without looking at the other um, and they all kind of influence and connect with, with each other. Um, so we start with that in year 12, we start by sort of laying those foundations and introducing you to these concepts before we start looking at the particular media products that are in the exam because all of the questions and all of the, the A-level, the whole study really is based around these four areas that are all kind of interwoven together. Um, so media industries, uh, essentially, what does that mean? How the media industry, so companies, the people that produce the media products, process of, as a production, distribution, circulation, how all of those things affect media forms and platforms. Media language is essentially how the media through their forms, codes, conventions and techniques communicate meaning. OK, so by having a particular camera shot or having a particular um, colour palette, how does that influence uh, the meaning of, and the message of, of what's being uh, represented? And then moving on to representation, how the media portrays events, in issues, individuals and social groups. Representation, every media product, even those that are essentially non-fiction like news, are representing groups and individuals and events in particular ways because of the media language that they use and now you hope you can see through this how they're all interconnected you represent things in certain ways through the media language that you choose to construct the media product okay um, and then finally audiences uh, how media forms target reach and address the audience how audiences interpret and respond to them and how the audience become producers themselves and that last point is actually really interesting in modern media and therefore modern media studies is this kind of blurred line between producer and consumer. Uh, with the rise of the internet and digital technology, more and more, we, ordinary folk, are able to be the producers ourselves and create our own content, uh, which is really interesting to explore uh, in terms of the relationship between audience and, uh, and industry, really. Um, so we also look at context, three main areas of these that you may be familiar with, say, with your study of English. Uh, the different areas of context may be historical, political or social and cultural. So historical, of course, we look at the time in which it was produced and how that has an effect. Uh, we look at political uh, influences. Uh, so as an example, uh, newspapers, uh, the Daily Mail is sort of classically right wing newspaper. Um, and so it has this sort of uh, right leaning view of the world. Um, it's much more supportive of the Conservative Party than the Labour Party and so on. Um, and again, social and cultural. So how those kind of social influences um, have uh, sort of come through the media products that we're looking at. <clears throat> um, and uh, especially in more modern media texts, how things going on in the world around us influence what is being uh, produced and how it's being produced. A great example of that might be the influence of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, on uh, the way that it's being reported in the news or the way that it's being reported uh, via sort of online uh, um, outlets as well. OK. So what I would like you to do now um, and what we would be doing if we were in class together is having a go at answering these questions. As I said to you at the beginning, we're all starting at different levels, different stages. Um, and what I'd like you to do is think about, well, where are you? What do I know? So what I've done is broken, broken down the four kind of key areas and then given you some sort of targeted questions to have a go at. Um, 
and think about what you already know. Um, so what I would like you to do is, is maybe pause here for a minute um, and give that a go. Just make some notes about those four areas. Just jot down your answers to these questions. Um, it might be that you're not sure about some of the answers. It might be that some of the answers you've got a really great idea um, and you've got a really solid knowledge of that. Uh, but that would be a really interesting place to start to think about what you already know. Um, or as I say, what you might might already know uh, that you haven't necessarily thought about before now uh, as an academic uh, subject. Um, and just a very small taster, we're going to look at one of the four key areas today. So representation, how the media portrays events, issues, individuals and social groups. So I'm going to show you an example of this in action. Um, and get, hopefully get you thinking a little bit about it. And some of you might have seen these images before, um, but it, I think it's quite an interesting uh, way to, to sort of start thinking about different representations in media forms. Um, so, for example, events would be things like Brexit, protests, elections, again, uh, just because it's current at the moment, the, the protests on Black Lives Matter, um, some news outlets representing the protesters in certain ways, uh, some uh, representing them in other ways, deciding whether they are the protesters are the heroes or the villains of the piece, uh, depending on that. Um, individuals, uh, Donald Trump, Theresa May, Beyonce, who was his name, Dominic Cummings is a great one at the moment and thinking about how he's been represented uh, in the media and why. Um, and uh, groups of people, pensioners, youths, men, women, uh, LGBTQ plus ethnic minorities. Like you, for example, might be most interested in thinking about how young people are represented across the media, um, not just in the news, but also in you know TV drama and films and things like that. Is that necessarily a true reflection of what life is like for young people or is it a version of it? Yeah. So let's just take a look. Girls Life. OK, so this is a, a teen magazine aimed at young girls. So just have a look at these. And again, you might decide to pause this uh, this video here just for a sec so you can have a little bit of a, uh, a bit of a closer look at these front covers. Um, it also gives you an idea about aspects of genre as well, uh, the, the, the particular format and formula that's used uh, for these Girls Life front covers. But if you take a look at some of the cover lines, which is the, the sort of headlines, if you like, on the magazine, a look at the image um, of the three girls here um, and what representation what is the representation of teenage girls what do these covers suggest is important in a teenage girl's life um, and what 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 is it suggesting that teenage girls should be prioritizing in their lives um, again just taking a, a very quick glance here um, at some of those cover lines um, and what these very influential magazines are suggesting girls should be prioritising. So do press pause for a minute, have a closer look and have a think about that. OK, I'm going to move on to the next slide now. So again, if you do need a little bit more time, just pause it here. Um, but then take a look at this one. Now, unfortunately, and again, you might have seen this. I think this is actually on one of the displays in the uh, in the school uh, stairwell. Um, so you might have seen this before. Uh, this is not a real magazine front cover. This is a, um, a a sort of reworking of this middle cover here. OK, so they've used the same genre features. It looks very, very similar on the surface to the original, uh, but it, what this person tried to do when they were putting this uh, together um, is create a different representation, uh, create something that's maybe a bit more uh, positive, uh, a bit less superficial, a bit less about you know fashion and, and hair and, and boys, and much more about, uh, about sort of self-worth, you know, girls doing good, your dream career, best you ever. And if you compare that to best year ever, uh, you can see uh, how to have fun, make friends and get all A's. Well, this is be yourself, work hard and get better grades. But it's maybe focused a bit more on the ethics of hard work um, and um, wanting to sort of be your, the best version of yourself rather than relying on how you look or what other people might think of you and so on. Uh, so I think it's just a really good illustration, this, of uh, the way that the media can have an effect on us um, and can be presenting us with certain ideas about, about who we are and, and how we should live our lives and what's important. Uh, so really good 
in this course to kind of scrutinize the way that those things are being presented to us through the media, which no doubt is influential on our outlook on, on life. OK, so really important stuff. OK, the last thing I'm going to talk to you today about is the summer tasks. So you may have seen these on the website already. If you haven't, uh, go take a look because um, it's really important to get cracking on these if you haven't already started. Uh, they are summer tasks. They are not, you know, the night before you come into school tasks. So do make sure that you give them the time that they deserve. We do take them in in the first week back. Um, and obviously it's our first opportunity to see what your capable of uh, to see the work you produce, the effort that you put into that work. So important to start as you need to go on um, and give this a really good go. OK, so I'm just going to talk you through these. Uh, but again, you can look at these in closer detail on uh, the website. So there's a range of different tasks uh, that you need to do. So the first one, and I think quite a fun one that to give a go to, because what it does straight away is get you thinking about yourself as a consumer of the media. Yeah. Uh, so to create a scrapbook or collage that details all of your media consumption over a two week period, uh, which could include TV shows, film posters, screen grabs from trailers uh, that you've watched, newspapers or magazine clippings and so on and so forth. I won't read through the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, a, a, a sort of visualisation of uh, the media that you consume over a, over a two week period. Uh, it can be uh, sort of something that you do uh, electronically. So you don't necessarily need to get the print stick out and start gluing things down. You could put it together um, on uh, a even something as straightforward as a PowerPoint slide um, and then print it out. Uh, that's absolutely fine if you want to put it together electronically. Um, so I think that's uh, that's quite interesting just to get you thinking. Um, and we'll be sharing those and talking about the things that we're interested in uh, when we have our first uh, few lessons. OK, um, so it does say as well, as you create a scrapbook, note down the source of your media consumption. So, for example, you might watch a lot of films but do you watch them on Netflix? Do you watch them on Amazon Prime? Do you watch them on you know, DVDs? How do you consume that media? Because that's also an interesting thing to explore as well. I would say, you know, to, in 2020, a lot of us are consuming a lot of our media through our phones or tablets rather than um, more traditional forms. So task two um, is to choose your favourite music video. Uh, so that will that take some thinking. Uh, um, it, it's difficult to land on one. Uh, so if you're struggling to think of an absolute favourite, then cho choose one of them uh, that you could give a go to. Uh, create a presentation with screenshots providing an analysis of the music video. So not just a summary, not just what is happening in the video, but trying to analyse getting to grips already with, with the idea of analysing media language, uh, why it's your favourite, uh, what genre it belongs to, um, the visual codes, uh, the mise-en-scene, if you don't know what that is, don't worry, but in the performance of anyone who's in the video, audio codes, so that would be any, uh, any sounds to the music and the lyrics, technical codes, things like camera work and editing. And then down here, we've got a... Um, a sort of checklist of different shots and angles. Some of you might be familiar with these, some of you maybe are not. But think about why those different shots have been used. You might also think about the pace. Yeah. So every shot, every time the camera cuts to another shot, uh, that that counts as another shot. So it might be that the pace, the cuts are quite quick uh, in places or slower in others. Uh, there are some really clever ones that do it in one whole shot you know the whole thing it doesn't cut away at all uh, which is really quite impressive uh, to do because it, it would have to be one continuous performance um so there's some again more details on camera movements editing techniques and a bit on mise-en-scene uh, if you're not sure but that mise-en-scene essentially french for the look of the scene uh, so how everything comes together to create a certain impression okay and then finally task three which is on the final page um, is looking uh, and exploring this advert uh, uh, for uh, successful marriages start in the kitchen. Um, and so I'm just going to see if I can scroll down a little bit quicker. Uh, a 500 word analysis of the advert. Again, not to be, uh, I want to sort of explain this really clearly that, you know, in media, there is a lot of analysis. There is a lot of written responses. You do are required to write essay style responses uh, in the exam. Uh, so we do need to make sure that we're keeping up with that and focusing on being able to analyse 
in our writing uh, the text that we're looking at. Um, and then there's some links uh, for the final three tasks, links to uh, thinking about theory, thinking about social and historical context, and then the modern context as well, okay? There is a final extension task, but I would like everyone to have a go at it. And this again, leads to the more creative elements of the course. Um, an A4 magazine advert for a kitchen utensil of your choice. Um, try to be gender neutral or challenge dominant stereotypes. Um, you can use a camera, publisher, whatever you may have at home. And I appreciate some of you may or may not have those uh, those details at home. If you wanted just to do it as a kind of sketch um, that you don't have to use technology at all, you could just sketch out your ideas using good old fashioned pencil and paper um, and still be able to share some of your ideas there. OK, so again, as with a lot of the summer tasks for a lot of the subjects, there's a lot to do there. Um, and it isn't something we expect you to get done in a, in a day or two. It is something we expect you to be working on. On over the summer, um, ready to kind of bring in uh, in September and, and share your ideas, okay? So that's it, okay. Uh, so I hope that was useful. I hope you found it informative and interesting and gave you a little bit more detail about the course, about what to expect from it and so on. Uh, we're really looking forward to meeting you, looking forward to getting cracking in September. And um, we, we can't wait. So yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, in, uh, engaging in this. And I will see you hopefully in a few months. Okay.